Welcome to this edition of Piedmont Business Live. I'm your host, Ken Morrison. Today we're talking to Neil Breed, who is the owner of Omega Funeral Service and Crematory. Neil, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having us, Ken. First, tell me, how did you come to get into the funeral service profession? <laughs> funny, uh, funny, funny story. Uh, I was a young man, five years old. A lot of people really don't know what they want to do at five years old. A uh, young man, I asked my grandparents, uh, can you take me to a funeral? What is a funeral? They kind of thought it was odd at first, and they said, well, sure, you can come. Well, I went to the funeral with them, and they went out and ate breakfast afterward, and I saw some things that were really interesting to me. And then, of course, as I went on through my uh, career as a, a student in elementary school, I became an altar server in the Catholic Church, and I used to volunteer for the funeral services and watch the different funeral homes come in and do their thing. And I was very impressed at how compassionate they were, how professional, how the funeral service was an actual celebration and a production at the same time. So that piqued my interest some more, and then I had a project to do in school to research a career. Uh, I believe that was when I was in seventh grade, and of course, uh, as soon as I mentioned, everybody erupted in laughter. And I followed that passion ever since I was a young man. Went in the Marine Corps when I was 18, got right out of the Marine Corps, went to mortuary school, started my career, and I've been in love with my profession ever since. So what makes Omega different from other funeral homes? Omega Funeral Service and Crematory in Burlington is a fully licensed funeral home and crematory, meaning that we can care, take care of funeral services and cremations. We do have our own on-site crematory, so that is helpful. Folks do want to know that, hey, is my loved one going to be sent somewhere else to be cremated? Will you care for them the entire time? We are a more affordable funeral service, so we've taken the concept of funeral service, <coughs> scaled it back to only what a family should need, of course, they are welcome to add additional things if they'd like, but we've scaled it back to a more manageable level financially, right. but we still offer the same services that most traditional funeral homes do offer. Okay. So we often hear this term, celebration of life. What does that mean? Back in the day, it was, we're going to mourn somebody. We're going to have the funeral. Funeral, the word funeral came from the Latin term funeralis, which means a torchlit torch parade. Oh, I didn't know that. Didn't, might not have known that, but it came from the, from the old days of, of uh, back in the old country people using the word funeral, funeralis. Now families are not wanting to mourn their loved ones, they're wanting to celebrate their lives. And funerals, Ken, are in essence the final celebration in a long line of celebrations. You celebrate birthdays, you celebrate anniversaries, you celebrate graduation, you celebrate weddings. This is the final celebration. You celebrate life. Exactly. We are finding as professionals that the celebration of life is more meaningful than mourning the death. Yes, you want to take care of the earthly shell, but you also want to reflect, pay homage, and share the memories and celebrate the life that was lived. So that's how celebration of life has come about. Makes sense, and I, I would imagine people really appreciate that approach to, to uh, celebrating somebody's life and kind of bringing this closure for them. Absolutely. We find the comments afterward, people are, you know, it was the most uplifting service I've ever been to. You know, it's not the typical drab and somber people crying. Yes, there were some tears shed, but there was also a lot of laughter because this person did have so many finer points in their life that we've talked about and shared the memory. So yes, in essence, a celebration of life. So with the rise of the popularity of cremation, that it has really taken on in the last few years, and as I understand, uh, that's rising, uh, expected to be about 50% in the not too distant future? About 50 to 60% nationally by the year 2020. And what funeral directors in first, the first thing that they, back in their, you know, when it first came about in the 70s and 80s, first thing they would do was, oh gosh, cremation, we, you know, we, this is a relatively new thing. Well, really all cremation was, Ken, is a, just a form of disposition of the earthly remains. It doesn't mean that the family doesn't want to celebrate the life. Right. doesn't mean that they want to have a service. They choose just not to inter, which is the correct word for burying their loved one. They choose to have their loved one cremated and then possibly scatter their ashes at sea, keep a portion of their ashes in a keepsake at home. A lot of times now some families make them into jewelry, things like that. So there's a lot of things that um, families weren't able to do with just burial, that cremation has kind of opened things up to. It's more flexible. So families, instead of hurrying and having the service within three to five days, they can say, well, you know what? We want to get everybody in town over the next 30 days. We'll have the service down the road. So just because cremation's mentioned doesn't mean that families necessarily don't want to celebrate a life. It's just a form of disposition of the earthly remains. And so they have the cremation done, and then you can help them in a 
in a way, I, I would assume it's a more relaxed, less pressure-filled way Absolutely. to plan that, that service because they feel like they don't have to get it in within just a, this short amount of time that they can really put a lot more thought and time into that Absolutely, and I'll bring this point up. You plan for a wedding. Right. Usually most people, people will take about a year or sometimes right. two years to do so. You plan for an anniversary, a year or two years. When you plan for, well, what folks used to plan for a traditional funeral, you have to squeeze over 250 details into the two or three days. Right. There's a lot of room for error there, which funeral directors do a great job. I mean, funeral directors really that do the job correctly do a great job in keeping all those details together. Burlington is really blessed with excellent funeral homes, and I count myself honored to be among them. So, yes, in fact, it gives the family time to slow the process down a little bit, stop, reflect, get a bunch of different ideas from different family members, make it a truly uplifting and meaningful ceremony. So, yes, that's a great answer, Ken. So, what is the value in prearranging a service or prearranging your own funeral? It's a great question. For years, death was a taboo. People really didn't want to talk about it kind of out of sign, out of mind, especially with the male element in society. They're the tough guy. They're really not going to die. They're always going to be there forever. Well, people realized, you know, funerals are going to go up, and they have over the years. Notorious, or I won't say notoriously, but uh, usually every seven to ten years, a funeral will double. So if a funeral today is $5,000, in 10 years it'll be $10,000. Right. What prearranging does, let's take the money out of the, the element. Let's talk about the wishes. A lot of times families will question me, geez, you know, I really didn't know what mom or dad's wishes were. Right. When you come in, and there's two types of prearrangements. One is just prearranging, putting down all your wishes on paper, letting the funeral home know, hey, this is what we want to do for our services. I want my children to know exactly what I want. If I don't want an outlandish service, I want something simple, well, then I'll make that known to my children. Then some families will take it the step ahead and say, you know what, I'd like to spare my family the burden of this financial hardship and an undue time. Right. I'd like to go, or uh, undue hardship at a, at a, at a relatively, um, tough time in a family's life, right. I'm going to go ahead and pre-fund this. And what we do is we place it into a funding vehicle that grows interest throughout a period of years to keep up with inflation. So on the other end, when the person does pass away, there should be at least that amount of money that the funeral cost at that day and time, plus some. And if there is some extra, we return that to the family or ask them, would you like flowers? Would you like other services? Right. But it is not, a, the public's perception is it becomes the funeral home's money immediately. It does not. It becomes a contract with the funeral home to perform services at a later date. It's total portability, totally transferable. If the family wants to move it to another funeral home, if the funeral home should close down, they can take it somewhere else. You're just coming in, making your wishes known. And that's the most important thing, making your wishes known. The second most important thing would be to fund it. And it, we often think about, uh, well, I've got to plan uh, for the security of my family with retirement funds and life insurance. Absolutely. But uh, I, I would imagine a lot of people don't think of it in terms of, wow, they're going to have to take care of these expenses uh, when I pass away. Um, this is a great way to also take another burden off their shoulders. Absolutely. I call it the gift of selfless love. And that's what it truly is. You're taking that away from your family and allowing them at the worst point in their life to grieve healthy, to grieve, prop to grieve properly, and without the added expense of where am I going to pay for all of this? Excellent. So, Well, if you would like to know more about Omega Funeral Service and Crematory, uh, you can visit their website. It's at the bottom of this page. It's also at the end of this video. Neil, thank you so much for being with us. Ken, we appreciate you. you telling us about your business, and we wish you much success. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Piedmont Business Live. We'll see you again next time.